Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, when people get too obsessed and things go too far with counting their macros. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about it. Uh, now, I know some people are going to state up front, well, Jason, you're not ripped. I don't want to take diet advice. It's not about taking diet advice from me. Um, it's about looking at the, of what's a healthy relationship with food, a uh, healthy relationship with your own diet. This is not about me. It's about you. It's about people figuring out their own issues. Um, but there are definitely problems with this, and there are even psychologists who are starting to note this, and that's the important thing. Um, this obsession with counting macros that people have, as if it's somehow necessary or that important of a tool for fat loss, body composition, anything else. A lot of people are like, are you saying macros don't matter? I'm not saying macros don't matter, but being within five grams of knowing your exact protein count, fat, and uh, carb count every day, no, that doesn't matter. That is not going to have any measurable effect whatsoever on your body composition. And I'll go so far as to say that missing your macro count on any of those by up to even 20 or 30 percent is not going to make one single ounce of body fat difference per year or one single ounce of muscle loss difference per year because it's just general ranges that matter it's about are you consuming enough protein to hold on to your muscle mass when you're losing fat all right if you are then it doesn't matter uh, <laughs> where your protein is it doesn't matter uh, as far as that goes, as far as your calorie deficit is concerned, all your body cares about is what your calorie deficit is, and it cares about if you're getting enough protein to whether it needs to start stripping more muscle tissue off faster. That's it. You don't need to know that it's exactly 190 grams. You know what? Your body is not going to make one bit of difference at the same calorie deficit, same calorie intake activity. You are not going to see any measurable difference, even in a DEXA scan, on the amount of muscle or fat that you lose if you can see 150 versus 200 grams of protein. You're not gonna see a difference, and that's a pretty big difference. That's a 50 gram gap. So why does anyone care about tracking it that close? Uh, same thing with certain things. You know what? All you need to know as far as fat intake, are you consuming enough fat that your hormone levels aren't crashing when you're in a calorie deficit? All right, and that's something people need to consider there. That's it. Are you consuming enough fat to get your essential fatty acids? And do you guys even know, does anyone even bother the people who count their macros to even look at their essential fatty acids? As are, those are the only ones you need. Those are the only ones that are important for health or survival. And are you consuming enough fat in general to kind of keep your testosterone levels and other sex hormone levels in a reasonable range? And does anyone even, who count macros even bother to check that? You know what, outside of that, your body's not going to care if you consume 50 grams versus 100 grams. Uh, when you're in a calorie deficit, it's not going to matter enough. In fact, if anything, um, just loose ranges matter. Once you're inside of just kind of a certain loose range beyond that, beyond again hormones like that, hormone level loss, muscle loss from not enough protein, it's completely irrelevant. Um, again, same thing with carbs. Carbs go too low, thyroid levels can drop a little bit more. Performance can drop in the gym a little bit. Outside of that, it doesn't matter as far as your body composition is concerned, your body doesn't care if you consume 200 or 300 grams of, of carbs. Doesn't care unless it affects your performance in the gym, which will affect your calorie burn and everything. That's it. It doesn't care. People overhype uh, these things because beyond these basic numbers, all that's going to matter for your body composition is how much muscle growth you stimulate, how many calories you're burning, and how many calories you're taking in. Your calories are all that matter. You know what? Uh, you're not even going to get your calories counted perfectly. People sit around with food scales obsessing over this, and we, they need to understand you're only tracking loose ranges. Did you know that you can't even, even with a digital scale and measuring food, that you cannot even get your calories accurately consistently within 100? Meaning you think you're consuming 300 calories, and even with that digital scale, you are not getting exactly 3,000. You're going to have at least 100 plus or minus calories, even taking a digital scale and weighing everything that you eat. You are still going to be up to 100 calories, maybe even 200 calories off every single day. Because, again, food densities, dryness, everything else affects us. How much moisture is in a given food is going to dramatically affect the weight versus what it's supposed to be at. Something as simple as if you cooked that chicken or that steak an extra five or, or under five minutes, difference is going to affect uh, how much actual calories, protein, everything are in it per unit of weight. Your scale isn't actually going to do all that. Same thing, you're taking your oats, all of that. 
uh, you don't know how much moisture was in it even when it was sitting dry in the container. That's going to have subtle effects, easily 10% differences, plus or minus on the calories. Same thing with your Pop-Tarts. So you guys are sitting here being so exactive. I consumed exactly, exactly 257 grams of carbs. No, you didn't. Even with your digital scale, you don't know that. It's just a ballpark. You know what? You can't even determine how many calories you burn a day either. That's a ballpark. The only way to do that is in what we call, like there's um, chambers they put you in in the metabolic lab to where they actually measure the oxygen and carbon dioxide and everything in the air to determine uh, your actual caloric burn. Outside of a laboratory condition, uh, environment and conditioned in a sealed environment to where there's no new air coming in or out that they don't measure, you can't measure your caloric burn. You can get close. You can say, hey, I'm burning somewhere between, you know, 3,000 and 3,400 a day, maybe 3,500. You can get it in a 500 calorie range based upon how far you missed your food and how much weight you're gaining or losing over like three months. You, you can get it pretty close, but you're not going to get it exact. And people sit around obsessing over this stuff. And it's really freaky how much people obsess. And you know what? Tons of people got contest lean. And I'm not promoting people get contest lean. Uh, but people did it without perfect counts, without scales, just with eyeballing a handful of ballparks. They've done it successfully. I've seen prep coaches successfully get people there that way. Without weighing anything or obsessing, they just get the ballpark. Are you getting enough fat? Getting enough protein? Are you in a calorie deficit? All right, you're probably doing the best you can on your diet and to lose fat uh, while minimizing muscle loss. That's it. People overcomplicate this, and you know what? It gets scary. It leads to eating disorders, all sorts of stuff. If you guys recall, uh, when I interviewed Pete, I did a 20-minute interview with a young bodybuilder um, who, after his first show, he had hired a guy I know and recommend uh, who, I'm not going to get into that. There's some personal issues with his life. I don't know if he's actually alive or not. Um, there are rumors that he either had a stroke or he's dead. He's kind of disappeared. Uh, but his coach and I talked even later about his eating disorder separately in private because uh, he had been his coach. Uh, but he developed such an eating disorder in tracking his macros that even four months after his show was over, he wasn't reverse dieting or anything. He was having anxiety attacks of whether he should count the two grams of carbs, the maltodextrin in his packet of Splenda going in his black coffee. And he said that in the interview. It had been months. He had been months out after his show. He was supposed to be clean bulking back up, going back into his off season. And he was actually having anxiety. He could, it was like he couldn't figure out, should he count those two grams of carbs or not in that Splenda? As if even 10 packets of Splenda would make any difference at all on the scale weight as far as your body composition goes. It wouldn't even be a measurable amount if you did that every day. You know, it's just consistency that matters, not even knowing the exact number. But he was actually getting upset about it. And, you know, when you see these guys who do all this, you realize that. And the other thing is... Um, it. This obsession with it, I see a lot of people promoting unhealthy habits. You know what? It's fine to have a little junk food every now and then, a cheat day. Um, nothing wrong with that, but people are still obsessing over what garbage they can fit into their diet. Um, you know, and this obsession with Pop-Tarts and other heavily refined foods, these are the very foods that cause health problems, obesity, everything else. And people sit around eating tons of them. And they're like, but I'm eating lots of vegetables and everything, so I'm good. Well, you might be. You are getting your fiber. You're getting your micronutrients. But you're also trying to fit in when you're not doing it because you need the raw empty calories. It's one thing if you're a marathon runner who needs empty calories. But it's another thing when you guys are trying to gain muscle, uh, lose fat, and you're measuring out all these junk foods. Um, you do realize eating these things too much every day, even though your body composition might be okay for a few years. It, in the long term, you're still setting yourself up for problems doing it. They're not good foods to sit around eating. Eating Pop-Tarts every day, eating Ben & Jerry's ice cream every day. Uh, just because you have a, a 400 calorie, 500 discretionary calories or whatever every day is probably not the best thing you could be doing. And it's not about body fat. It's about effects on things like insulin resistance. Um, it's about the effects of excessive fructose over time in your liver. I mean, there are issues with this stuff. Um, you shouldn't be sitting around eating just garbage just because you have some calories to fill. It's another thing if you're a chronic under eater and a high output athlete who can't get enough calories in, so you need junk food to reach your calories to perform. Um, but that's not what most of these guys are doing. I see guys on 2,500 calories a day. 
anybody can eat 2,500 calories a day of brown rice and chicken. Anybody can. I can't imagine somebody not. Maybe there are people who can't, but that's, again, the chronic under-eater. Um, you know, who are also throwing in, a th but I see people doing 2,500 calories who are giving themselves 500 calories of Pop-Tarts and 300 calories of ice cream every single day. Come on, guys. It's this obsession with the fitting the junk food in, and that's just as unhealthy as the orthorexia that you're concerned about. You know, you see that in a lot of these people talk about people who have eating disorders, you eat clean all the time. Well, you know what? What you're doing is an eating disorder, too. You're obsessing and actually weighing out Pop-Tarts so that you can eat Pop-Tarts every day and fit them into your numbers. How is that any less of an eating disorder than someone who only eats their <laughs> list of pre-prescribed foods and won't eat anything they count as junk food? How is that any... It's, it's a different, but it's still an eating disorder, guys. Uh, it's still problematic, and, you know, and it's a problem in this community. And, you know, at the end of the day, with the If It Fits Your Macros, people don't realize a lot of people have unhealthy relationships with their food. I have unhealthy relationships with food because I am, have a voracious, mind-boggling appetite. I always have. Runs in my family. Um, but by that same token, people like me, we can't do what you do. We can't go eat a couple Pop-Tarts and not want to eat the whole box. We're better off if we just stick to our bro foods. You know why? Because it keeps us from overeating an extra 2,000 calories. Moderation only works for people who don't develop food cravings, who don't have dopamine issues with their brain and addiction problems, who will eat the entire tub of ice cream if they take three bites. Uh, you know what? The very people who struggle with weight gain and being overweight are the very people who are going to struggle with uh, this if it fits your macros and macro counting problems if they're only doing it uh, so that they can get their extra junk food in. It's one thing if people are counting stuff a bit and they're eating foods that are going to help them suppress their appetite, but people who struggle with appetite, this sort of diet's a disaster for them. Uh, and that's a whole other topic, again, the problem with moderation. Uh, but yeah, guys, there's definitely a point to where counting macros becomes an obsession and it becomes a negative obsession. And these people honestly believe that they are truly accurately tracking their food and obsess over it when they're not even close. Sometimes they're off 10 or 20 percent despite their best efforts and they don't even realize it because they don't realize the margin of error and what they're doing. And at the end of the day, they don't even really know exactly how many calories they're burning. This is all ballpark stuff, guys. Um, you shouldn't need to make it that complex and you certainly shouldn't need to be obsessing over it to the point to where you really and truly think that you know exactly how many grams of carbs you ate yesterday. I can promise you that you don't. Welcome to the real world. Um, again, this is a very obsessive method for people to try to take control of something that they can't fully even take control of. And it's probably not even healthy uh, emotionally or mentally to try to do so. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.